All right, folks, today I'm going to talk about basically my first year of doing my own channel specifically for the purpose of one subject. I mean, I've got a channel under my name that I've had for years. I use that to watch videos of people that when I like them, I don't want them showing up on this channel because they're not like tech reviewers I trust or, you know, I don't think they're worth sharing. They're still good people. I still have that channel. I just haven't posted to it forever. Um, and uh, I also am not new to this at all. Uh, I have done, you know, consistently done YouTube videos and posted them up um, for my work. There'll be a little video on that. Probably the first segment I show. There's going to be like two or three segments, and I'll probably come in and talk in between. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what not to do when you're first starting. You know, how not to blow a bunch of money on something you may give up on in the first couple of months because you get disappointed. Or maybe you want to buy these things. Uh but Ben's that's up to you. Let's go to the intro and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so in the first segment here, I'm going to talk about how I'm not new to this stuff. I I've had a channel for years and talked about the tablets I owned, how to set up a WordPress site, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but that was under my name, and it was, you know, when I felt like doing a video. Uh, there was no intent of getting subscribers. I, I really didn't know how YouTube worked as far as, you know, making some money off of it. Uh, and I still don't because I'm not making any money off of it. Uh, well, maybe a little through affiliate links, but for the most part. Yeah, this is a, a total loss deal currently. Uh, that's okay, because I'm now talking about things that actually interest me, and and then pointing out stuff I see on the internet that maybe is total BS that you shouldn't be interested in. Like, you got to have the latest 5G phone. You're not going to get 5G in your neighborhood, folks, unless you live in New York, L.A., Chicago, Atlanta, Miami, uh, you know, Seattle, big cities, ain't gonna happen otherwise. Uh, but first off, uh, I'm just gonna kind of talk about, one, don't go out and buy a bunch of expensive equipment. Use your cell phone camera to shoot on. Get yourself a gooseneck mount or a tripod mount, something to hold it on like I'm using. And uh, I'll have a video segment on that later. Um, I'll show you the whole studio, which is like, uh, we'll take about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, beyond that, that's all you got to do. What you got to do is keep it interesting and keep subscribers. And then we'll get into the what you should do to keep subscribers, how you get those subscribers later. I don't have all the answers. Uh, let's watch that first segment right now. All right, folks, as you can see, uh, here I am at work, uh, but I'm just showing off. See all these cars here? This row, those rows over here. Every one of those I've shot a video on. Actually, I've shot probably well over 200 videos since 2014. Uh, nowadays, we put every single car on YouTube. So I'm not new to doing YouTube at all. Uh, I'm just new to doing it for a channel for myself. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. But... It's different when you do them for other people. I mean, I basically have a script here, and I stitch them together, and then I process them on a very old uh, uh, 
MX uh, 6453 or something like that, uh, AMD 2005 Gateway. But as you can see, if you go to our uh, channel online, and I will leave a link to it in the description, um, you'll see that I've been doing this kind of stuff for a while. We actually have 84 subscribers, which is kind of shocking. Uh, because when you're buying a used car, you really don't need to subscribe. You just want to go look. But it, it does help sell cars. That's uh, all for this uh, portion. So the last segment should have been kind of interesting to you. Uh, especially if you go visit our channel at, you know, Stalin's Used Cars. It will be linked in the description below. I say that like 50 times in every video and no one ever reads it. A lot of times they're like, well, how does this work? What's this? It's like they're in the description below. I told you during the video, please read. Um, but you will see the progression on that channel from me shooting on a seven inch tablet to a, a nice Asus eight inch tablet, which actually took extraordinarily good video. Um, and then finally over to the Blue Studio smartphone and now on the mobile G3. And of course the video quality has changed a little over the years. And the editing obviously has changed because I've learned how to use OpenShot and put things together. And that I learned here mostly and then transferred back over there. And it works surprisingly well. Uh, so, I promised a little tour of the studio here. You're going to see all the inexpensive equipment that I use, and you're not going to see anything that costs more than 200 bucks, except maybe my little Zotac PC. I think it was 259 by the time I was done building it. You know, I got a bare bones PC, put an SSD in it. Got a gig of RAM, bing, bang, boom, I'm in business. Uh, I do still need a new Dell monitor that you'll see in the picture. It's like almost 20 years old. So, or, yeah, yeah, roughly 2001 to, yeah, 18 years old, whatever. It's old. And it's going to croak at any time. So I'm going to buy that eventually. I, to never have and spare money. And so, uh, let's go into that. And then I'll come back and show you my average day. And we'll talk about, before I show you that, the disappointments you're going to have. And yeah, you know, how things can go to hell in a handcart pretty quick. Uh, things you don't want to do. Once again, I don't have all the answers. I can only tell you from a one-year perspective. And it's taken me a lot of trial and error to learn stuff and do stuff. And we're doing okay. But let's watch that video right now. And check out the incredible plethora of equipment I don't have. All right, folks. Those of you who wanted to see the entire studio, it isn't very big, folks. Uh... We have my chair, not so comfy, my cheap keyboard, and uh, some soda, and uh, my cordless mouse, one of those $2 cordless ones, and uh, well, beyond that, we've got our Dell monitor over there. That conglomeration right here in the middle that I'm trying to focus on, and I shall, is my gooseneck mount, which I bought real cheap. Uh, under that, you'll see I took an old charger that quit working, put a rubber pad on top, because the, uh, the slot for a camera on a cell phone was down the center, and a lot of times it just blocked the view. So this way I turn the camera sideways, shoot landscape, which I'd rather do anyway. And uh, 
that worked just dandy. There's a lot of focus hunting going on in the G3. Uh, nothing up here. We're seeing those speakers are no longer used because we're using the UNS Angle 3 right down there as our PC speaker. And then sitting way back there is the Zotac. Uh, PC, mini PC, with an N3150 processor in it, that thing churns out all these videos. It will end up processing this. Um, a desktop mic, I'm wearing my lapel mic right now, and uh, my old pair of Cos headphones, and over here we've got my wireless router, my MPOW, headphones sitting there there's my uh, chewy hi12 tablet it's charging up and of course you can see a few amazon boxes and the briefcase i use every day to take the uh, tablet to work and use it with my bluetooth keyboard as a pc that's the whole studio that's it i mean i clear everything off on that desk when I do something, you know, like an unbox, and I can readjust the camera on the gooseneck, I would prefer to get a tripod. Hopefully, we'll get one of those soon. Um, that's, uh, that's it, folks. That's all there is. I don't have a fancy area to do this stuff in. Sorry. So, after... Having arrived at home uh, at about 5.30, I'm finally finishing up the last video here from Chris over at Tech Tablets. Yeah, and as you can hear. Okay, now to answer my question that I've been asking, is it worthwhile going for this phone, which is and, uh, more battery capacity? Of course, uh, that means uh, I've spent like the first two and a half hours of my evening uh, picking out, you know, files to like, which if you go to my channel here, um, you'll see in the liked videos every day. If you check those, you'll see the ones I'm watching. And they should be of interest to you too. Uh, sometimes they're not budget. Sometimes they are budget. Um... But every night, I got to watch all eight or nine reviewers I trust because I started this whole reviewers I trust thing and therefore I am sort of stuck with it. That's uh, just how it is. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, after I watch all those reviewers I trust, which are on my site, you go to my channel. You will see them all the way on the right here. They're all listed. I watch all their view views. You'll see all my subscriptions are mostly reviewers I trust. Um, that way when I post a like, they end up right down here. So you can see what I'm watching. It's a good way to keep track. It's not all budget. It's not all cheap. But it's good to, you know, kind of look at everything, isn't it now? Of course it is. The other thing I look at, of course, the first thing when I get home. Ooh, 260 subscribers. Fantastic. And uh, about where am I at? Now, this is after a year, and I've got a whopping 17,062 hits. Views, whatever. And then I'll go into, up top, my... Uh, uh, YouTube Studio Beta and check out what's been getting hit recently and I'll, and sometimes that'll cause me to maybe change my end cards. These are things I learned about end cards uh, or uh, end the little end videos that will come up. You'll see them at the end of this video. And so 
I'll do that. And uh, uh, then I'll go off to my the channel under my name and watch a bunch of other videos from other people. Well, I think about what I'm going to do for a video that evening, which is why my videos don't normally come out till like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Because sometimes I don't come home with an idea. I'm just like, oh crap, I ain't got diddly do to talk about. I got nothing new. So here are some of the disappointments you're going to get, though. You're going to get things like, uh, oh, uh, the other day I got two emails. I was all excited. People wanting me to test stuff. One was that uh, selfie stick. And the cool part was it also had a built-in tripod. You could slide it out of to use the selfie stick part. The tripod part was cool. You could, you know, shorten the selfie stick up, stick it back in the tripod, you know, open the legs up. And uh, it was probably better than my gooseneck mount, a little more solid, uh, probably easier to use. Uh, so those folks, though, asked me to give them a good review on Amazon. They wanted me to purchase it first and then give them a good review and then they would reimburse me and I'm thinking well that sounds like you're paying me to do a good review for something I wasn't in the market for I don't take selfies except when I'm staring at the camera uh, and that's the video camera talking to you folks it's just not something I do and I had to explain I can't guarantee a good review can you guarantee me you'll reimburse me if this is a piece of crap, and I know damn well, you know, they're not going to. They won't. And then the other one was from somebody who wanted me to test, you know, another, basically a lapel mic. I'm like, I'm up for that. I, I, I could stand to have a second or third one around. And they're like, well, if you agree to this, you know, we understand you may or may not have a good review on Amazon will ask you not to post an Amazon review if you don't like it, but you're welcome to post a, a YouTube one. And I'm like, well, that's fine. More crap to test is good. And so I'm still waiting for them to deposit the amount in, through PayPal into my account. I give them my PayPal me uh, link, which is in the description below, by the way, uh, if you'd like to help support us. Uh, that'd be great, but I have seen nothing yet, so prepare for disappointments like that. You're like, oh, people want me to send me stuff. Eh, it's probably not going to happen with 250 or 60 subscribers, really. They're all wanting to, you know, I got a rule, I... I you're going to get what you get. If I don't do 100% honesty, what good am I, you know? I got to be honest about stuff. So, uh, that's about an average day. So, be prepared for, you know, one day you'll have 260, and by the end of the day, you'll, you'll all of a sudden have 253 because you bad-mouthed something they thought was a great product whoever it was who, you know, subscribed earlier because you recommended it maybe or you downplayed it or you said something bad about it. Uh, point is, don't worry about that. People who are genuinely interested in info, whatever your niche might be, I don't care if it's like finding white rabbits or uh, how to hunt for mushrooms in Botswana land in the desert. Sure enough, there's a market for it. It's going to take time. The word has to get out there. Uh, here. And of course, you'll also learn as a low hit subscriber, 
your stats don't get updated very often. Sometimes I'll see on my channel page that I got a new subscriber. I won't even see it in the studio for like eight hours. Sometimes I don't get notifications that I should. You know, YouTube's got issues. But last but not least, how to get those subscribers. How to keep them is sticking to what your channel is about, or at least within the realm of your tech channel, stick to tech. You know, don't start talking too much in the way of politics or don't talk about airplanes as if you're running a car site. Don't talk about cars if you're running an aviation site. And you know, pretty common sense. Uh, but it's like selling a car, folks. People come into our dealership. I'll walk out. I'll talk to them. And, you know, and eventually I'll run test drive a car. And uh, they'll come back. And I'll be like, what do you think? And I'll be like, huh. That sounds good. It's like, well, I can write you up the sales quote and you can think about it. In other words, I'm asking for the sale. I'm not telling them to buy right now. I'm not forcing them in. I'm just like, this is what it'll cost out the door, everything. You know, we got no hidden fees. We charge a flat fee. And we're not like a lot of car dealers where all of a sudden it costs two or three hundred dollars more. So uh, you do the same thing. And you're going to see it right here because this video is just about over. You're going to see a little thing slide up and say, subscribe. And a little bell. And you're going to hear a ding. And uh, if I time it out right, it should have come up the ding while I'm talking. And then you're going to see, please give us a thumbs up. And that's all I have for today. Just kind of keep these things in mind. It ain't going to be all, you know, perfume and roses until you convince people. Now also ask them at the end of the video, please share this to all your social media. Put it in your description. Put it in your first comment that you pin. Please share this. You'd be surprised what a single Twitter share can do for you or a single facebook post from so that's all i have for today so uh we're gonna head to the outro and you'll see those end cards i was talking about that i had to learn about you know and i'll link a couple of videos up there in the corners and a big subscribe button on the lower left make sure you subscribe thanks for watching have a fantastic day. If this helped you at all, leave some feedback. Tell me about it. And give us that thumbs up.